Soft King here guys, thanks for stopping by the channel today. Give it a good old like and share if you enjoy today's comment. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to prepare your eggs for incubation. So I got a bunch of quail eggs here. I want to show you what I do to encourage uh, good hatch rates and just what to do to make it easier for your quail to hatch out overall. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to float test them. What this is, is dropping eggs into a water. Um, doesn't seem very scientific, but what is actually going on is we are rehydrating our eggshells so that when it comes time for them to hatch, um, they are more brittle, so they come apart better. So one thing I want to show you guys too is You'll know if you have a bad egg because a bad egg will float, but there will also be eggs that will sit in there like top down and it'll just kind of scoot, scoot, scoot around the bottom. Usually what's going on is um, that egg just needs to rehydrate and usually it'll settle down. It'll, it'll wind up being set to level on the water as opposed to this end being down and that end bobbing up. Um, Hadn't had any of those, but we want to start out with a fairly large bowl of water so you can do several at a time. You don't have to stop trying to go until I find a bad one. And we are still doing good. So that's overall a good thing. It means that The uh, eggs are developing. So what causes an egg to float? Inside of this egg there is an air sac that is basically right up here on the top. It's less large in quail than it is um, other poultry. But if there's not enough yolk, enough embryo in here, the air sac will be larger and the more air that's in the egg the more buoyant it is, so it floats. So that's a scientific reason as to why bad eggs float. These are all sinking like a rock. And um, Is even... that also a good way to tell if uh, you have enough cocks to your hen ratio? No, so her cock to hen ratio should be uh, five to one is as most as you want to go. But what you're talking about is the fertility of the egg and the only way you can check fertility is by busting the egg open and looking at the yolk. If the egg is fertilized, it will have a white speck on top in the middle of the yolk. But at a that point in time, you know, it's ready for an omelet, so no longer able to do that. Uh, another way to check if your eggs are developing after you start the incubation process is candling. Uh, I don't candle my eggs. Another reason why I like to do this for is if you haven't already wiped your eggs off, it's a good way to clean your eggs. floaters so far guys I'm also going to show you how to treat them with uh, a disinfectant so you remove any funguses that could be on the eggs oh it's a good sign um, I'm a little worried about some of these because some of these are brand new hens that just started laying. You know, typically you want to give your hens seven days from the time they start laying before you want to collect them. But I've got so many eggs that are in such abundance that uh, it doesn't really matter. 
some of them don't thrive, that's fine. But it's a big thing since we improved our incubator. I had to improve my day o hatch pen. And a buddy of mine said, um, hey, South King, I seen you using a terrarium to put them birds in. Would you maybe want a bigger one? And I said, yeah. Yeah, maybe I would. So he said, come over here and get it, and I'll pick it up. So I went over today, and uh, he gave me, I think it's like a 100-gallon terrarium or something. It's huge. It'll probably easily do 100-day-old chicks at a time. But, um, all right, I've about got the capacity of this bowl, so let me change this out. So I want to show you this egg right here. This, if you see the blue tint to it, that is an egg that is from a bird with celadon genes. Um, from what I understand, oh, we got a floater. We got a floater. See, baby, the one I just showed you, the <laughs> celadon egg bird, that is a bad egg. Yes, sir. When they float like that, they will not hatch. They go ahead and throw them away. But the blue eggs are reminiscent of uh, celadon genes. Some of them will have a blue cast to them in this flock. Um, I think that it's probably passed, I mean, it has to be passed down from uh, bird to bird, obviously, it's genetics, but either way, just wanted to point that out to you guys. Some of my bird eggs are uh, really blue cast sometimes, and other times, uh, they're more of this brown and white. I don't know if some days they run out of ink and the tone is just lighter or, or what. Uh, there's another floater, baby. Get a picture. Uh, come here and look. Yeah. So again, see it coming up there. And now as I'm looking at that, I can also see there's a little crack in the shell. So that's another way to help you inspect the damaged eggs. Is that all? Okay. So now that we got our eggs flow tested, we came by two bad ones in this pan. We're going to mix a little bottle of disinfectant. So what we use for that is this original Listerine Gold. Now we mix it about half and half with water. I've already got some water in the bottle in preparation for the video so we're just going to pour this in there and top it off all right give it a little shake and all we're going to do is we're just going to spray this half mixture of whiskerine and uh, water on our eggshells and we're just going to roll them around Smell all fresh. Killing any bad bacteria or fungicide that could be on our eggs from sitting around. Just roll it around, give them a good old spray. Alright, so now that we got a glycerine on them and we float test them, we'll let them sit there overnight and dry in the morning i'll pick them up and i will load them into my egg turner i've had my incubator running for know, 12 14 hours now so by the time i get up in the morning it'll be on for a full 24 hours so i know i got the temperature rock steady all i have to do 
just open the door, set this egg turner in, plug it up to the power strip, and uh, anywhere from you know 15 to 19 days from that point, I'll have baby chicks. After I put them in the lockdown box, of course. I don't make it sound like that's all you gotta do. But it's easy enough, guys. And uh, if you're interested in food security, producing your own meat, some good viable protein, things that you know you nurture by your own hand, you see the life that it has, and you can see the quality that it is for yourself. You know, this is something that you can do in any space, in any backyard. These birds have been domesticated in Japan for thousands of years. It's been a staple to them and their culture. So, it can really be a valuable part of your everyday life. But uh, I enjoy them, and uh, hopefully you will too if you check them out. But for the time being, give us a little like and share if you don't mind. Subscribe to me. I'll show you some pretty cool things. And in the meantime, y'all have a great night. Savage King out.